And now what I want to do very quickly for you is the shape of the bait. So the shape of the bait is the idea of the tops of letters represent the aspect of that letter that's clinging to the spiritual realm. In other words, the top of the letter is going to be more spiritual, and then the letters are going to flow down. Okay? So the bottom of the letter is more relating to this world, and the top of the letter is relating to something more spiritual. So therefore, if bait is the letter of connection and relationship, um, then if I have an idea, now an idea is more spiritual because it's in the realm of thought than an action. Correct? So let's say I have an idea. So we'll put that idea up in the spiritual realm. Okay? We're just going to draw this to represent an idea. Let's say I'm Rembrandt, and I lived hundreds of years ago, and I'm a world-famous painter. Although, I don't know if he was world-famous while he was painting. I don't really, after, okay, whatever. Anyway, and, and, and I see a sunset. I'm standing in a meadow and I see a sunset. I go, oh my gosh, what a gorgeous sunset. I see the struggle of existence. I see the beauty of the world. I see tension. I see drama, whatever, because that's what Rembrandt sees when he sees sunsets instead of the rest of us who see partly cloudy with a chance of clearing or whatever, like a weather report. So he says, I got to capture this. This is moving me to tears. He runs back to his studio. He takes a canvas and he spends the next week or two painting that sunset onto the canvas. So what he did in essence was he took an idea that was the sunset he saw and he created a flow of that idea into his world and he put a version of that idea down in his world on that canvas. So the idea of the sunset was captured on the canvas over the next week or two. So he took an idea and brought it down into this world. Now if you go over to Rembrandt and you're looking at the canvas in the studio where he painted, and you say, wow, Mr. Rembrandt, what a gorgeous sunset. Uh, the colors are beautiful. He goes, yeah, thank you. I, I liked it myself. He said, and you say to him, listen, I'm just curious. This sunset you have on this canvas here, is that the exact sunset you saw? So I'll say, yeah, listen, uh, the exact sunset I saw lasted two, three minutes. This is how I understood it, or this is how it affected me. This is the version I understood, right? But it's not the exact same. Meaning, whenever you have an idea and you bring it down into your world, there's always something unique about that idea that makes it different from where it originated from. The version on the canvas is not the exact one he saw. Just like, you know, you, you and your husband have goals, that you have dreams, you have visions, you have ethics, you have morality, you have all these things, and you want to you give that over to your children. So your child may, let's say you have children, your child may look like you, act like you, walk like you, talk like you, dress like you, but your child's unique, your child's not you. Uh, or you, you, you take Michelangelo and he needs rent money, so he takes a block of marble, carves a horse, and the next day sells it for a thousand lira. He goes, well, that was easy. He buys another block of marble, carves another horse, sells over that. He keeps buying blocks of marble and carving horses so he can make his rent money. So he's taking the same idea and bringing it down into every block of marble, but every horse is going to be unique because the marble's different, the humidity was different, the temperature was different. Whatever it was, you can't take something from the spiritual realm and the way it impacts down here is always going to be. That's the shape of a bait, obviously. It's an idea flowing down into our world, creating an impact with a unique aspect that's different from where it came from. Okay, any questions about the shape of the bait? Mm -hmm.